In today's video, I show you the deluxified version of Ultra Quest by Blacklist Games. Before we get into today's video, I just want to thank all of my Patreon supporters. They make this channel what it is. And for the month of November 2020, here are the winners for the GGGG. We had three GGGGs. The first one was Shattered Hell Kickstarter 90 Euro Pledge by Crippled God Foundry. The second one was the all-in mega bundle pledge of the Lost Bio Labs from Digital Taxidermy. And then finally, the printable scenery Shadow Fake Kickstarter Hermit's Tower Painted. So these three Patreon supporters will be receiving the gratitude gift. And for all of you who continue to support my channel, I want to thank you for that. Make sure to subscribe and stay tuned because later on this week I'm going to be announcing what the GGGG is for December of 2020. I received my Kickstarter version of Alter Quest about a week and a half ago and during that time I've been madly painting all 211 miniatures and terrain features and was able to finish up after about 55 hours of speed painting. If you haven't seen my tutorial for the core box set go ahead and check that out here. In this video I'm going to just show you how I manage this pretty fiddly game because there are a ton of cards that you need to manage as well as show you my 3D dungeon made from Dragon's Rest. I have a previous video talking a little bit about that if you want to see that go ahead and click here. And then finally I wrap up the video with a quick not painting tutorial but more of a walkthrough of which paints that I used for the stretch goal miniatures. I apologize I didn't do a step-by-step -step painting tutorial like I did for the core box but that was because I was wanting to get all of these done and it takes a long time to create those painting tutorial videos. So let's go ahead and dive right in. Okay I want to show you how much table space this game is taking up. Now I know my board is a huge part of it but I want to show you the system that I derived for all of the cards and managing all of the components. So I actually had to have another spot here in order to be able to uh, handle all of the cards. I made these for Shadows of Brimstone because that's another card heavy game and I'm using that to have the extra cards for each of the heroes and here um, I have both Myrene and Quella and I printed out this off of my 3D printer as a discard pile and draw deck and then also for the hero card to go on this slot above here and then this is the equipment starting equipment and then uh, this is my hand as well as um, a wound tracker and any other search items that I gain. I'll put links to my 3D printed I found this on Thingiverse and 3D printed this and I also have a link of these that I made off of Microsoft 3D Builder. So that helps manage the heroes and then this is a threat area below here and I'm sleeving my cards as I go so that I don't have to do the almost thousand cards all at once. And then over here is the draw deck for the faction as well as the faction card here for the threat deck. This is for the villain deck and these card holders are a little bit shorter because you don't need as many. And I'm currently uh, 3D printing out two more. One I'm going to use for my search cards and then another one possibly for the lurker deck. I might make a third one over here for the quest deck. 
and this is for the altar as well as all of the features and um, I lay them out actually while I'm in the room but then once I leave the room I'll put them up here. I actually found that I don't ever go back to a previous room or to a previous feature so I didn't have any issues not keeping track of all of the search tokens that go on there. I don't know if that might change in other scenarios but at least for the search uh, that's what I used. And then I have my tablet here and I highly suggest that everyone go over to Board Game Geek and follow Dr. Bandage's post about how to play. You know, I read through the rule book once, but this really is super helpful in having you learn the game. Let's go ahead and move to the 3D board. And as you can see here, it is huge because each one of the squares is an inch and a half. So it is 50% larger than the original board. And it is, if you've seen my HeroQuest board, it is larger than the HeroQuest board. Each of the rooms is bigger. And so I wish we could have used the original HeroQuest board, but that is not the case because it impacts gameplay. And if you haven't seen my video, uh, I do have a previous video of me um, and how I made this board. It's completely magnetic. And then because it's so wide, I didn't actually put the border piece along the edges here because it's four feet, almost exactly four feet wide. So I only uh, used my edge pieces like this on the dungeon. As well to mark where the features go, I laser cut this acrylic and just basically place them where they need to be. And for each of the spawn points, I'm just using this well. This is a file from Fat Dragon Games, a Dragon Lock system. I think it's the Dungeon Accessories 3 or something like that. I'll, I'll post a link in the descriptions below. But this comes with a set, and I think I reduced this by 75%, or printed it at 75% original size, uh, just to make it a little bit smaller. And actually, I know on the original board, a lot of people complain that you can't see where the spawn points are very easily. Obviously, having these makes it super easy to see where they are spawning. And all of this is from Dragon's Rest. If you haven't seen my videos about how to download the files, because you actually don't buy the fantasy files from Dragon's Rest, you need to become a Patreon supporter for $6 a month, and you get all of these files and have access to them so they don't ever expire. So that is an awesome deal. Go ahead and check out this video in order to navigate and know what kind of files that you should be getting. This did take a while to set up. Uh, it wasn't a fast setup, but now that I have it set up, I'm gonna keep it on my gaming table here and just play for a while. But it does, the downside is it takes up a ton of table space. Uh, so as long as you don't mind that, it looks really, really cool to have a 3D board. This came with the original file set um, from Dragon's Rest, so the stairs going down is awesome. And then as well, I did replace a lot of the furniture because, again, I did build my board in anticipation of Alter Quest before I received the game. And the scale being different, I did just use Dragon's Rust stuff. So this is, again, you gain all of these furniture files once you become a Dragon's Rust patron. So here's a close-up of the ones that I did replace with the original on the left and the replacement on the right from Dragon's Rust. And you can definitely use the originals. You don't have to create the larger versions. But because I didn't really know what the scale was going to be before I received the game, I did replace it. And these uh, two are from the Artisan Guild, Amazon's Kickstarter. That is a replacement for this altar. So overall, super happy with how the board came out and adds a lot of depth. I love that these doors open and close. So I did have a lot of fun playing this scenario, this uh, initial scenario, even though um, I played it a little bit wrong. I went this route. I went through this room and then here and then all the way over here and then fled down here. 
and um, finish out, uh, didn't finish it out because I knew that I was going to be able to run over to the stairs and win the game with Box and a bunch of the frocks chasing after us. So I think Myrene and Koala as a combo worked really well for me. And I'm eager to check out all of the other combinations of heroes. Now I do wonder how this game will play as a pure solo w rather than managing two heroes. Because typically when you play a game, it's better to have two heroes versus just playing one because you have more synergies and more choices. I do know that some of the heroes do have allies that work with them. So maybe I'll try that out as well because I do want to try it as a true solo. And then I laser cut this insert for the cards. Again, when I sleeve them, it will double the size of it. So I'll take up these two spots. And because all of my miniatures are going to be going into my case, my display case, I think I can have everything just in one box. The token holder is here and I'll post in the descriptions below uh, which uh, token holder this is but pretty much holds almost all of the tokens that you need. I hope this video was helpful for you and in inspiring you to maybe create your own 3D board or get all of your miniatures painted or helpful in knowing how to manage all of the cards in this game. Please like and subscribe and as always go ahead and check out my Patreon page to see what the gratitude gift is for this month. Otherwise, like I mentioned, stick around for the painting walkthrough for the stretch goals. In the meantime, happy gaming, happy painting, and we'll see you next time. All right, so first we're gonna take a look at the poxoids. So if you take a look at the color scheme here, this is the Gorgrunta fur and snake bite leather here. This outside coat is Space Wolves Gray along with this strip right here. I think I used the Army Painter soft tone for all of their skin. So you, you can use Agrax Earth Shade as well, although that's a little bit darker. But I wanted a warmer tone for the fur and closer to white rather than having it be a darker color since most of the cloth is darker and I didn't want it to blend in. And then for these guys, I actually opted rather than painting their cape to be the distinct color, I painted up the little gem in their wands and I was a little bit worried that that wouldn't be enough of a distinguishing color but in fact when you look at them on the board it's actually enough color for you to be able to distinguish them. So a lot of these, a lot of times I chose to color most of their clothes or I could have done their cape but as long as you can see it from all the way around, I think having something as small as these actually makes it distinguishable enough that you don't have to, you know, do as much colors as I did here with these guys. But with this, uh, again, this is the Gorgrunta fur here on the pants and the snake bite leather for the armbands as well as the belt and then my usual silver with the null oil or strong tone for all of the silver and then these guys I used wildwood for the pants snake bite leather here and here and then the color uh, here yellow I did for the cap as well as this loincloth and that's pretty much it. These guys were pretty easy. And for Rancidian, I colored him really differently than what's on the card because it was pretty hard to tell where, because he's a merge of all of these smaller poxoids and it wasn't really that distinguishable except for the heads that are popping out. There's an arm here. Like I couldn't you couldn't really tell from his muscles here that this was gray and then they put sort of a brown so I could have used gray for all of this part here and then maybe a lighter like seraphim sepia for all of the flesh that's exposed 
But to me, I wanted him to look more fleshy and gross, and so I just painted it with pink and then made my own formula using floor wax in order to put this red all over. And then I went back and put um, Magos Purple in certain spots just to create more shading. So th this was a really different method than I used for the rest of them. And then I put white here for the eyes and bones that might be sticking out. So I'm not 100% happy with how he turned out, but he definitely looks pretty gross and disgusting, which was my aim. And sort of this amalgamation where he has doesn't have skin over his over his flesh, and you have these little poxoids popping out as well. So even though I'm not 100% happy with this, um, I think he actually looks better than what's in this picture. That's how he turned out. And then the plague nests, I pretty much followed uh, the color that's on the card, but uh, this I did not use contrast colors per se because I had spray painted this to be gray. And so I did the traditional method of layering it with brown, dark brown, and then lighter brown. And then I put green and then uh, blue and lightened it up with dry coating with lighter blue. So this is more of a traditional method. I could have used contrast colors, honestly. Um, that probably would have been faster because then I could have done uh, this nest part of it with snake bite leather and then could have done the green with orc flesh and then the blue with talisar blue. And I think that would have turned out fine and probably would have been faster. I also didn't distinguish these by making them the red, blue, yellow, and green. Uh, I could have done that, I guess, with what is currently green here with different colors, but um, I guess if I do need to distinguish it, which I don't know if you really have to, but if I do need to distinguish these, I'll just put the ring on the bottom. So next up are the Bray, and these guys took forever to paint, and I think, I wish, in retrospect, I would have done it a little bit differently. So let's first look at these guys. Um, what I started doing was I painted the inside of the armor and then I went back and did the gold, basically using regular gold paint, whereas this, the color was contrast colors. And then this here is snake bite leather, which is the same for all of these guys. And the skin I used was Basilicanum Gray and then the horns was snake bite leather as well. Blood Angels Red for the handle. Uh, this part over here is the Gorgrunta fur, and then the regular silver up here, and then this is ironed in yellow for the flames. Now, what I should have done is just painted all of the armor gold first, and then went back in and just went over the gold with the contrast colors and that would have been a lot faster because the way I did it was I had to be careful and just paint all of the edges gold rather than if I would have just painted everything gold and went back uh, putting in the contrast colors that would have been faster and easier and same thing down here um, although I think edging this uh, lower part was better because you would have the gold showing through this snake bite leather which wasn't an effect that I necessarily wanted but these guys took forever to paint. So did um, these. And here I'm using Gorgrunta fur for all of the skin, Black Templar for any of the black parts, and then snake bite leather for all of the strapping here with the flame again using ironed and yellow. So this took forever because I painted around the white edging on the clothes and probably would have been faster just to paint everything you know in this example green and then going back and white lining the edges instead of avoiding those lines overall i think i like how these turned out and i think they look relatively good but it, these took forever a long time to paint these guys uh, versus these little guys whenever you have really small minis like this they're super fast to paint and these are fairly basic. Um, kept the white, didn't put any 
uh, colors on top of the white but edged the base color on all of these used snake bite leather for the bag wildwood for the bracing gore grunt of fur for the boots and snake bite leather for the rope this actually was pretty easy too because I just did uh, ironed in yellow and then striped with the blood angels red black here as well as snake bite leather for the horns and I kept the white white I didn't do any shading with the white and this method is I did not use contrast colors instead I spray painted it base coated it with white and then put uh, spray painted yellow over it as well but I didn't intentionally keep uh, I kept some of the white on the inside uh, white so when I was spray painting with yellow I didn't you know go in really deep because I wanted some white to show through and then I went back and dry brushed with orange and these were really fast and easy to do all right the Lunarin um, the werewolves were easy with basilicanum gray for the fur and then uh, this was snake bite leather for the pants and then um, the colors just for the torn up shirt it was a little bit hard to tell what part was the shirt and what part was fur but I just took a guess and then I just used red for the mouth and then dotted the eyes to be pink as well as the inside of the ears I did a different color scheme for this sixth one I'm not 100% sure why they threw in this model since they already have this hero model but I decided to just color it brown just to be different from the other ones and again all of the hero models I paint the base black instead of gray and this green is Militarum green and some snake bite leather and the dark brown is wildwood and here I left it white and put on seraphim sepia over the white just to give it a little bit of beige color this hero is mostly snake bite leather the dark brown is wildwood I used the ironed in yellow for these parts as well as the bow and uh, militarum green for any of the green parts and then I used seraphim sepia for the hair and the top of the arrows uh, these guys basilicanum gray for his beard and his hair gore grunt of fur for the strappings snake bite leather for the wood wildwood for these dark brown parts for his clothes most of his clothes and snake bite leather for the strapping on his sandals these took a long time to paint as well because there was so much strapping and detail I think I used Griffhound Orange for this outside of the shirt yeah I think that's Griffhound Orange I'm not 100% sure I used a combination of snake bite leather for the browns especially the net here is snake bite leather and then the darker browns are wildwood and then silver with Nuln oil over it again for all of the silver parts and here I did not use Talisar Blue but instead used Army Painter's Blue Tone and then these traps um, I did spray paint the dark brown so I did just dry brush successive lighter colors uh, until I got to this beige color so this wasn't using contrast colors and here I decided to put the color indicator on these rags that are on the floor as you can see here so here are the outlaws and mostly use black templar just to keep most of them dark and then the wildwood for the clothes here primarily i use gore grunt of fur for the hair for these little guys and then decide to color the cape as the color indicator uh, gore grunt of fur again for the belt For these archers, I decided because I wanted the cloak to remain mostly black that I just used a color indicator for the edge of the robe and the inside. And I think I like that effect rather than coloring the entire cape because it isn't so overpowering to have those sort of candy colors on the miniatures. 
Here is Gorgrenta fur on the inside, Wildwood for the dark brown, Snake Bite leather for the lighter brown. And here this is Wildwood for the dark brown parts. And then I use Gorgrenta fur here for the left scabbard and the right scabbard obviously is Black Templar. And I just did the Seraphim sepia wash for the hair. Also these traps were relatively easy. Again, I uh, spray painted these to be gray and so I painted first a layer of rusty brown which is this craft paint here or Rookwood red and then I dry brushed with silver which makes which gives it this rusty look. I did the same thing with the cage where I spray painted everything black or I'm sorry I spray painted this black but this part gray because of the flooring and then went back and put black over on top of for just a grating and then I dry brushed everything with just spots of this Rookwood red so you can see parts of it that are reddish and then I dry brushed silver on top of that so it gives it this worn metal look which I really like this industrial metal look so that's sort of the similar process that I made with these and I made a color indicator to be the center uh, trigger plate okay for the crowl here um, I decided again not to do the entire robe to be the color indicator but just this part here and I'm actually glad that I did that because it's a little bit more subtle so those guys were easy to paint now with these guys I wish I would have done the same thing that I did with the outlaw archers where instead of painting the entire robe here I wish I would have just done the edge because with both of these guys it, it's too candy colored and I really like the white on this guy, the sort of the lurker version. And I wish I would have kept it white and just did edging right along the edge of this back cape to be the color indicator. Now these guys took forever because if you look really closely here, I put down, I colored all of the armor silver and then I used snake bite leather on the inside of the armor to keep the silver edging. And so that took a long time as well as all of the um, Gorgrunta fur where I use this brown so these guys took a long time to paint but I wish I would have done edging on these guys as well as this because it looks like a lifesaver roll how much uh, color that is in these guys so same thing with this I wish I would have done done just a base and then edging because there's it's just too much of that color I think and this is snake bite leather down here, this brown, and then the dark brown is wildwood. For the traps, I painted, uh, again, I spray painted this with a dark brown, and so I just dry brushed this tan, and then gray for the beak as well as the hands, and then silver for the tip right here. And then the color indicator is just a band. So, I mean, see how little color is in here? but it's totally enough to be in the color indicator so I wish I would have been more subtle with the rest of the guys in terms of their color so here's the boss and I first did the this floating head with purple the um, army painter purple tone and then it looked like from the card that there I couldn't tell if her clothes is just white and it's just reflecting the color of the purple I couldn't really tell so I actually used Magos purple for her clothes but I didn't like how dark it was and how similar it was to the skull so I went back and did some white dry brushing once uh, the Magos purple was dry and it lightened it up and I think she looks better that way so let's look at some of the allies and heroes first up um, I wish I would have just painted the horse's head a brown or a light brown because uh, looking at this I think it's a little bit too dark and I don't like how the head is purple the same color as his clothes so in the picture I just tried to match what was there but um, 
I'm not 100% happy with how he turned out. So, oh well. Um, and then uh, this purple is Army Painter purple that I put two coats on to make it brighter. And then this is snake bite leather for the scabbards and then a little bit of red down here for the hilt but mostly just silver. The gray is basil basilicanum gray and then this is just silver with null oil over it. He was really easy uh, just black templar for his cloak the inside is just red. We have wildwood for the boots. The pants are ultramarine blue Talisar blue for his shirt and then I just used Seraphim sepia for his hair so he's he was really easy and then she was easy as well um, I did go back and actually put flesh just to lighten up her skin because it was so dark the I didn't put enough white spray paint on her when I was doing the zenithal highlighting so I just went back with a little bit of flesh just to lighten up her skin tones I wouldn't do this for a minion, but because she's a hero, I did do a little bit extra work. We have Gorgrunta fur for her shoulder pads, snake bite leather for her armbands, Gorgrunta fur for the staff, ironed in yellow for the ends of her staff, uh, Gorgrunta fur for her boots, black for her pants, and then um, orc green for her skirt. I did orc green and then I just lightened it up uh, to do some dry brushing to try to make it look like green flames. And then uh, I really like her ally. This cat is super cool. So just put black templar over the whole thing. Went back and used white to uncover all of the parts that are currently yellow. Once the white dried I did put ironed in yellow just over it. The, because the undercoat is black, um, I don't know if you can see, but some of the yellow did get onto the black. I wasn't super careful, but it doesn't really matter because the black is so dark that the yellow, you can't really see it that well. So I really like how this uh, turned out. He was relatively simple. I chose to actually keep most of his armor silver and then putting the null oil over it or dark tone and then just did various colors like Gorgrunta fur for his top. I went back with a little bit of white um, just to do the fur. This dark brown down here is wildwood. This up here is just Blood Angels red. So he was, he was relatively simple to paint. She was as well some strong just uh, colors. I chose to do her cloak in red and then green up here in the sash in green kept her um, shirt white. Uh, this looks a little dumb. I need to put a little orange on here because she has a flame there. But um, And then this is Wildwood for the browns. Allies here. He was really easy. Just used Wildwood for the brown and then Snakebite Leather for the pants. Did silver with Nuln Oil over here and nothing for his gray hair. Uh, he was easy too, ironed in yellow, and then just Blood Angels Red for the edge of the cloak, just to give him a little bit of color, because I didn't like how his whole robe was yellow. She was easy too, just did yellow, ironed in yellow for the armbands here, and used Wildwood for the skin tone, and that was it, so she was relatively easy. This guy is mostly browns, so did snake bite leather for his cloak and then the lighter tan is just using seraphim sepia as well as for the scroll and then I went with some brown and just did random markings. Did Gorgrunta fur for these potion bottles, green obviously here and the wildwood for the banding and dark brown. So pretty easy. Um, mostly armor, so silver with the Nuln Oil, Snake Bite Leather for this part here, and then Wildwood for the darker browns. Uh, same thing here, her silver with Nuln Oil, the black parts are Black Templar, Wildwood for the darker brown, and then 
actually ironed in yellow for the hair and used gold color to distinguish it from the hair and then put seraphim sepia over the gold. I actually painted all of her armor silver but instead of Nuln Oil, I put Seraphim Sepia to give it that light gold color on her armor. And then everything else, this is the purple wash, Army Painter wash, and I did two coats of that. So here I have two more traps. This, these spikes are really easy, spray painted gray, primer gray. And then I just did the tips with um, green, not the contrast colors, but just regular paint green. Uh, dry brush with lighter green on top of that. I did not color code these. I could have done, you know, the tips, the poison tips, yellow and blue and red, but I'll just use the color discs on these if I need them. These things was just using a base dark red. This is not contrast colors. And then just painting, you know, a little bit of beige for the bones and then red for the organs. This I spray painted base gray and then went back with a dark brown Again, these are craft paints, and so the dark brown base that I use is the Burnt Umber from Apple Tree, super cheap craft paint. And then I lighten it up with layers of color. Um, first with Milk Chocolate as the second dry brush layer, and then finally mixing it a little bit with Honey Brown to give the final uh, top coat. And then just some gold here at the top with some random colors in it. This altar, uh, again, I just dry brushed with successive layers of lighter gray. And then went back with green uh, here as well as the dark brown, the apple barrel burnt umber for any of the brown parts and green for these parts. You know, I wish I would have done these bubbles down here a purple or a different color than the moss up here. Um, I'm not 100% sure because uh, there's no card reference showing what these bubbles are, but I, yeah, I just wish I would have painted it something different because um, you're like, what is that? What are those things down there? Because it ties too much in with the moss. So if I would have made it purple, it would have distinguished it from being something organic like that. And then just uh, dry brushed uh, successive layers of fr starting from the dark brown up to the skeleton color. Okay, this trash heap, you know, I actually spray painted this gold uh, similarly to this because I thought this was actually a treasure pile <laughs> rather than a trash heap. So I had to, once, um, once I realized that, I just covered the whole thing in black and gray and brown just to make it look dirty and then just put in few color specks here and there uh, just to fix that but it, it looks more way more like a trash heap rather than a gold pile and then this I spray painted the whole thing gold and then I had to color the base because it was gold successive layers of gray which is using zinc Americana uh, craft paint zinc and then doing dry brushing, uh, mixing some slight gray with the zinc to do an intermediate gray, and then finally finishing with straight slate gray to get uh, this dry brushed effect. And then once, uh, because this these flames were gold, I actually painted it white with regular craft paint white and then used ironed and yellow to get this flame effect. This I just, the whole thing was spray painted gray and so I needed to paint this with brown, the wood pieces, and then black for the pot, and then just used regular green paint, not contrast colors, and then just did dry brushing with lighter and lighter uh, until it was almost white. So, and then down here I did paint wherever the flames are white first, and then I used ironed and yellow to give it that flame. This was super easy, just dry brushing against successive layers of lighter gray, and then just doing gold for this part here, uh, for whatever this thing is. So this this guy was super easy. Oh yes, finally, um, these traps, uh, these took a while because I did spray paint everything gray and then did black for up here, and then edged the color indicator for the edge of the flag, 
as well as down here, whatever this bolt of cloth is down here. And then did um, typical layering. I didn't do contrast colors for the skulls and the bones down here. Just started with a dark brown and then got up to almost white. For the flag, I actually used a dark red for what's supposed to be a palm print and then white for the skull here in the middle. This is a flag that broke when I was pulling it out of the container and so you got to be really careful pulling these out and when I glued this I wanted to pin it because I was worried that it would break off if I just glued it back on without pinning so using my pin drill um, I did stick a little piece of paper clip to hold it in place so that it won't pull off but it's a little bit crooked which I don't mind.